everybody, Karma here. If you're a new viewer, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoy this channel. And for everyone else, thank you for coming back and sticking with me. I'm especially grateful to those of you that have subscribed to my channel. You know who you are. You've really helped my algorithm with YouTube, and I want you to know I really appreciate you. Today's video has been sponsored by Pops Trading Post. A link to Pops Trading Post has been listed below. I have a really interesting story for you today, so sit back, relax, grab something to drink, and I will read you a story called A Star to Guide You. I've always been attracted to stars since I was very young. My grandmother used to love to remind me that the very first pair of shoes I allowed my mother to put on my feet had stars on them. I have two younger brothers whom I will refer to as Willie and Waylon. Willie and Waylon were hell on wheels. Even as teenagers, my mom would pull her hair out at all their shenanigans. One of their favorite stunts to do whenever my mom was angry was to pick her up and helicopter her over their heads and then toss her back and forth, pretending that they were going to drop her. My mom would scream at them to put her down. Then they would gently place her down, dizzy and staggering, and kiss her, running off as fast as they could to not get punished. They both played football in school. Both hung around together at school, and both got in and out of a lot of fights together. They were always so close, and while I loved them both, I often felt left out of their little clique. They both became hard partiers in their teens. They started drinking, and it continued unabated into their adulthood. It placed our family in crisis. Willie and Waylon's crazy behavior stressed both of my parents to distraction. Their favorite pastime was to go drinking in a town that was an hour away through county and rural back roads, where late at night the chances to hit deer were very high and very real. We all warned them repeatedly not to do this. They were simply tempting fate, but maybe they thought they were invincible and this would never happen to them. Be that as it may, my husband found a job in that particular town that they liked to frequent and go drinking in. One very cold night, I received a frantic call from my husband. He woke me up out of a dead sleep. He had worked late that night and decided to drive home through the back way to avoid traffic. He was calling to let me know that he had come upon a horrific scene. The truck driven by Waylon was crumpled and shattered in a ditch. He had spent time searching the area for the boys, but they were nowhere to be found. He had to know. Had they made it home? I was beside myself with worry. It was one o'clock in the morning, and it was bitterly cold outside. It was a night fit for neither man nor beast. As I looked outside of my house, I started to pray, and slowly... Filling with dread, I called and woke up my parents to tell them the situation. We got dressed, and it was decided that my father would stay home on the off chance that my brothers made it home. My mother and I made the decision that I would drive the county and rural back roads, headed towards the town that was one hour away to see if I could find Willie and Waylon and drag them home. Halfway there, I came upon the accident scene with Waylon's mangled truck in the ditch. My husband ran towards me and advised he had looked through the ditches in the woods, but had found nothing. We split up and again canvassed the area looking for some sign of the boys, going out of our minds with the fear that we would find two mutilated dead bodies somewhere. The weather was freezing cold and I knew that if both of my brothers were out in this weather, injured, they wouldn't last long. We drove up and down those county and rural back roads so many times, I lost count. My husband called the police to report the accident, and we kept driving from one town to the other, desperately searching for Willie and Waylon. By 3.30 a.m., the police had the accident scene, the mangled truck, and the area lit up. 
they too were looking for Willie and Waylon. We called my father to see if Willie and Waylon had maybe made it home after all, but he shattered all our hopes. As I looked up from that phone call, I noticed a neon star. I was drawn to it, but shook off the feeling and focused on making another round from one town to the other. At 5 a.m., we were exhausted and feeling so hopeless. The star called to me over and over again when we passed by its location, but we were focused on finding Willie and Waylon. Anything else was placed on the back burner. We were advised by the police to stop searching and go home. Discouraged, we went home. We had spent the entire night looking for the boys with no success. When we made it home, I received a call on my cell from an unknown number. Although I normally don't answer these types of calls, I was numb at the moment and not thinking clearly. I answered the call and felt my blood turn ice cold when I heard Willie say, Hey sis, it's me. We had an accident. Can you please come and pick us up? It's really cold out here. We hadn't been home 15 minutes when the call came in. Where are you? I screamed. We had an accident, Willie reiterated. They had gone to a bar in the town one hour away, and on the way back home, Waylon was tired. His truck had drifted and went off the edge of the road and hit the drainage culvert. He lost control of the vehicle, and that caused the vehicle to roll over. Were you drinking? I asked him. Yes, he admitted. We both were. It's really cold outside, he said again. After the accident, they had crawled out of the mangled truck and walked to the nearest residence to knock on the door and ask for help. But no one was home. Fortunately for them, they had tried the handles to the vehicles in the driveway to try and get out of the cold. By some miracle, one of the vehicles in the driveway, a van, was unlocked. When they got into the van, they noticed that someone had left their cell phone in the back seat. The cell phone still had enough of a charge for them to make a call, and now Willie was calling from that cell phone. We got back into the car once again with renewed purpose. Following Willie's directions, we made another trip to that town an hour away. As we were coming to the house where my brother had said they were located at, I looked up and saw the neon star I had seen so many times a few hours earlier. My husband and I were able to pick up the boys. They were bruised and bloody, but otherwise all right. Waylon learned his lesson with this accident and quit drinking. This strained his relationship with Willie, who refused to quit. Both of my brothers are men now, and both have families. Waylon has two beautiful girls, and Willie has two beautiful girls and a handsome son. Waylon has made great strides in his life because he quit drinking. He lost a lot of weight and will no longer even drink sodas. Willie is a hard worker, but he's still a hard drinker. His family life has always been unsettled, and he has never been able to let go of the bottle. As for me, any time I see a star, I remember not to lose hope and to keep trying. Stars represent all that is good in the world to me. They bring me comfort and joy. I have always loved stars. Interesting story. I'm a person who believes in signs. I'd say that a star was sent to the OP to renew her faith and give her strength, even though she missed it. I was really impacted by the story and glad that her brother survived the accident. I think that uh, through all our lives, we receive signs to guide us. Sometimes they're so small they are missed. A few years ago, I applied for a dream job where it seemed that the odds against me were insurmountable. But the week after my interview, when I had not heard anything, I started to see four-leaf clovers everywhere. And I mean everywhere. A week after that, I was called and offered the job I wanted. 
I think the signs are different for everyone. If you have received a sign that has helped you, comforted you, or just let you know that everything would be okay, let me know in the comments section. Thank you, OP, the original poster, for sharing your story with us. If anyone else has gone through a similar situation, please let me know in the comments section or leave three heart emojis to show your support to the OP of the story. Likes and comments are the best way to support my channel. If you would like your story read on my channel, please submit your story to karma at karmageddon.com or post to you slash karmageddon on Reddit. All stories will be read anonymously with either initials, descriptions, or pseudonames only. Thank you again, Pops Trading Post, for sponsoring this video. If you would like to place an order through Pops Trading Post, please use discount code KARMAGETTON, all caps, for a 20% discount at checkout. That's my video for today, and remember, do something nice today and help me change the world. It's not their turn, it's my turn to shine, like the rain. Thank you so much for all your feedback and support. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, feel free to share with anyone, and subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss any new content that comes out. Catch you in the next one! Laters! <laughs>